Hello everybody, my name is Calvin and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an elastic slider using Axure 7, preferably the Pro version. Now I just want to show you just some background around the elastic slider. This is Theme Fusion. This is a theme on one of those major theme marketplaces. And what they have created is an Elastic Slider plugin. And this is just to showcase what an Elastic Slider does. If you click on here on the controls, you get um, a particular transition associated with image and with text. You'll notice that the actual control is literally laid out as a horizontal rectangular format. So what we have at humblex.com is uh, actual libraries uh, for designers and developers alike for them to be able to create um, prototypes and really craft out projects early on for user testing. Let me show you what we are going to be creating today. So over here is our elastic slider which is available at tumbleux.com what it has is a bit of text a navigational system three control navigational system bars you click on one you click on the other one and text slides in from the right moving to the left and that's what we're going to be building today it's very stylish it's very simple and this particular slider is available at our shop. Let me just quickly show you. If you would go to humblex.com slash shop. Just waiting it waiting for it to load. Okay, cool. And if we scroll down here, yes, there's a range of free extra widgets. For different purposes and what we have here is the elastic slider we haven't priced it so you can get it for free uh, even after this tutorial or during this tutorial and what you'll find is it is a range of uh, sliders with different effects and we've created uh, about uh, eight interactive templates for this okay Let's get to the tutorial. So fire up your Axure 7. If you have Pro, that's excellent. I have an untitled document here. So what we're going to do firstly is really create the background for our elastic slider. So just drag in the rectangular widget. We want to define a size of about, let's make it 1165 with um, a height of about 410. Cool. Let's enter that. Cool. So what we have here now is our actual base and our actual background where our animation is going to happen. Secondly, what we want to create is the actual text which is going to be moving from right to left so let's just drag in I think I'll, I'll begin with the heading the heading uh, widget okay let's type in for this particular point I'm going to say um, this is uh, an elastic slider text. Cool. Full action. And below, I'll just put a subtext caps lock on elastic slider. I like to style my fonts so. If, it's visually appealing and it has a sense of typography. I like to change the 
Let's change the actual color of the font to that. Reduce the size to about 13. And let's space out the actual font and center it. Boom. There we go. It's already looking very nice. Cool. Next up, let's uh, make this a dynamic panel. So you right click on it, select convert to dynamic panel. Let's open it up so that it's got a bit more space. Move it up so it's got a bit more space up as well. Let's call this dynamic panel slider text. All right. So what we have is a dynamic panel on top of a normal shape layer. Next, what we need to create is the actual states which the, the text is going to move through. So just highlight your actual, your slider text dynamic panel. Let's double click into it. Cool, and let's add two more states. State two, state three. If we go into state one, we'll see the text that we had just entered. Let's copy that text. So I use control C, and let's go to state two. Let's paste that text in there. Let's change the text name to something like uh, okay caps off mega bundle made by designers for designers cool let's just wrap this this text in and get it centered. Cool, let's just move this little part down on to the second line just to make it really balance out very nicely. Okay, cool, that looks nice. Let's copy this text, go to state three, paste, and let's put a different text for this slide. It's going to be smoother, not soother, but smoother, and more crisp. Sweet. Cool, let's step back to our view of all the states. So we have one, two, three. Cool. Let's get back to our view of everything. So what we have is our background and our dynamic panel with three states, right? Which is great. Now let's move on and create the controls for the slider. So let's bring in our rectangle uh, widget. We're going to resize this. Uh, I'll resize it later to be much thinner, thinner looking um, control. But for now, this should be fine. Let's kind of stretch it out a bit. And then if you press Alt and drag, you can duplicate that exact rectangle um, in its dimensions. Drop it, and there we go. Let's have another one, Alt, drag, and drop. Okay, cool. So we've got three controls here. Let's select those three controls. Okay, let's set the selection mode to just select the ones I want. Just those three. Let's get it centered. There we go. Let's make sure our distribution is perfect horizontally. Cool. So far, so good. 
So what we want to do is to make sure these controls actually work. And they should have particular um, interaction states. So what we're going to do is right click, select all of them, right click and choose interaction styles. Okay, on mass over I want to have a fill color which is a slightly light gray, right? Something like that. And on selected, I'd like something which is a bit more darker. So something like that. Cool. So that should be awesome. So what we've done is we've set, we've put interaction styles for mouse over and selected states for the slider. Okay, so far so good. Now what we need to do is to create a selection group. So what a selection group is, is it is um, a grouping for your controls in such a way that if one is selected, the other two get deselected. De and if the other one is selected, the other two get switched off. So let's right click with all three controls uh, selected. You go to selection group, type in a name, I'll call it uh, control group. Okay. Cool. And now all three controls are within the same group and it will act pretty much as uh, radio buttons. If one is selected, the other two will be switched off. So the other one is selected, the other two will be switched off. Cool. This is going very well. Cool. Next, what we need to do is to put an actual action or an interaction on the actual controls. So on click, what we would like to do, firstly, let's cancel this. Firstly, we need to name our shapes. It's very important to do so because we need to differentiate which control um, the first one is or the second one is or the third one. So we'll call this nav1 and we'll call this next one nav2 and the last one nav3. Cool, let's add our interaction to nav1. Okay, so what we would like to do is to set the panel state. Remember we created that slider text dynamic panel? We want to set that uh, panel to the first state. We want to animate um, the slide coming in. Uh, let's see, coming in from let it let it slide left okay and and when it animates out we want it to fade out 500 milliseconds which is just right we also want to set selected our actual navigation shape so nav1 that gets set to true so that's cool Say OK, and that's been rendered. OK, let's move on to our second nav, nav control. On click, make sure the panel state is set to state 2. Animate by sliding to the left. Animate out, fade 500 milliseconds. And let us set selected nav2 to true. Lastly, select panel state, text, 2, 3, animate to the left, and fade, 500 milliseconds. Awesome. So if we were to actually preview this, Let's see what we have so far. OK. 
Okay, generating. Okay, here we go. So we've got our first um, uh, look at our what we've created. Let's select slide control two. That brings it in from right to left, so that worked. And it retains its active state, which is awesome. And when we mouse over the other controls, it has the mouse over state. Let's select three. Awesome. And we select one. Perfect. We select three. That's good. The only thing that's not working properly is our third selection for it to be active. If we select two, two works. Like three, three does not work. Okay, so let's go back to extra. On three, select our case. Cool. So what we have here is the sliding of the text is fine, but our selection was not on. To nav three, set to true. Okay, cool. So that's perfect. What we now have is controls which will work um, in terms of uh, active and inactive states. Excellent. So let's just zoom in a bit to reduce the size of this. Make it a, to look a bit more slick. There we go. And then as with most modern uh, sliders, there's usually a preview text. So what we're going to do is to add a little label here. It says slider one, right? And some subtext one. So what this would be would be like um, information about what's coming up on the slide. So if you had, um, it's a great way to preview information without the user having uh, to scroll through them. And I'm just adding some styling to this information. Let's uh, duplicate this by pressing Alt, drag. We'll have one for the second nav bar and one for the third one too. And let's change that to two, that to two, that to three, and that to three. Cool. And let's run this. On preview, it generates this HTML uh, rendering. Let's select one. Perfect. That's selected. Two. It loads in the text three and one perfect and that is it from humbleux.com the tutorial how to create elastic slider for action if you'd like to get this particular um, widget and seven others you can go to humblex.com and look for the Elastic Slider Library Kit. This is for free. So you can literally add to cart and then just check out. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. For me, thank you very much for following along. Cheers.